What is going on Neon Nation? So yesterday I asked you guys to give me your most asked questions about Cyberpunk 2077. I've spent around 50 hours in the game so far. Uh, and so with that, I'd like to go through some of your questions that you asked me on Twitter and YouTube uh, and get you guys up to speed a little bit more on some of the things that you want to know. So the first question here is, other than the prologue, are there quests so far that you found exclusive to one life path? Like rising through the ranks as a corpo or special races for nomads only? So far I have not found quests that are exclusive to one life path, uh, although I do know that Alana Pierce's character is only available in the nomad playthrough. I haven't seen one for Street Kid or Corpo yet, but there are so many things to do, and I've been jumping around from here to there, so I'm sure I'll come across it at some point, I just haven't as of yet. Ulysses Ramirez asks, are the bugs ignorable? Is it easy to get lost in Night City? And what were some of your favorite mechanics? Uh, the bugs are not ignorable. They, they do pop up frequently enough where it hampers your experience, I would say. Most of the bugs are not major. Uh, this is a obviously a pre-patch version of the game, um, but there are a lot. There's a lot of clipping issues, there's a lot of issues with you getting stuck on geometry. There's even some dialogue bugs where you won't be able to progress uh, through your conversation with somebody because they'll just be staring at you. Uh, and so yeah, there are a lot of bugs. Um, but with that being said, this world is massive, guys. So uh, it's kind of a little bit more forgivable given the circumstances of how big Night City is, uh, but they are not ignorable, no. Is it easy to get lost in Night City? Yes, it is very easy to get lost in Night City. I still don't know where I'm really going. If you were to take the map away from me, at this point have a general idea of where I might be, just based on the architecture around me, uh, but not concretely. And so I've, I've spent 50 hours with the game and uh, I'm still finding new alleyways, new streets, new buildings. Uh, surprisingly, you can enter a lot of the buildings. Night City is mostly an outdoor city, but you do get sent into mega buildings for missions here and there. My favorite mechanic is probably the double jump, just because it's so useful and I even when I'm running around the city, I'm just double jumping in everywhere and there's a nice little sound effect for the feedback for that one. Uh, and it helps you get up to, you know, higher up spots that you can mantle up on top of. So uh, very useful. It's one of the cheaper augmentations for your legs, so uh, that one is good. Michael Hill says, can your character change physical appearance after the initial CC? If so, how deep does it go? I don't believe you can do that. You can swap your cyberware out, which uh, will mostly affect your arms uh, from a visual standpoint. As far as changing your character's physical appearance, I didn't see that. Ripper Docs don't offer that, so I would assume that no, you can't do that. Jacob is asking, have you watched any in-game media, any dementedly violent Saturday morning cartoons, any unsettling family sitcoms? Um, there, every time you get into an elevator, there'll be some TV segments on, there'll be news. Uh, I, I have seen a violent Saturday morning cartoon. It is part of a, of a quest, um, but it's quite funny and a little disturbing at the same time. Unsettling family sitcoms, not really, it's mostly news. They do have some pretty interesting news stories if you're paying attention. There were times where I didn't want to get off the elevator because I wanted to finish uh, watching a story. So I guess the answer to your question is, yeah, there's in-game media that you can consume on the streets. Eddie Broccoli asks, does our home and apartment change throughout the main story in any way? It does not. Believe it or not, I've spent maybe 10 minutes in my apartment. You are not in your apartment very much at all. Most of the things that you're doing in Night City is going out here, going out there going out to the Badlands, going out to this district, you're not going to be spending a lot of time in your apartment. With that being said, no, I don't think you can change anything in your apartment. Joukowsky asks, how does a map fill out? Are there question mark locations like The Witcher 3? What entices us to explore every nook and cranny of Night City? So you have a bunch of markers on Night City, you have question marks, you have NCPD events where there's shootouts or something of the sort in the world that you have to go and address. There's cyber psycho events where someone has gone on a rampage, you have to go take them down. And there's also random things that pop up in the world, random discussions between gangers, random events that are happening that are not li listed on the map. Um, so there's plenty of things to do. If you're going to be a completionist, you're going to spend a lot of time in this little vicinity, completing everything you need to do before you move on uh, into this next block next to you. So there's a ton to do, and it's all pretty engaging content. Some of them will be more in the style of The Witcher, where you're using your Kiroshi optics to scan what happened, and these are mostly in the Cyber Psycho events. The cyber psycho events are mostly like the monster hunter contracts from the witcher and the other ones are more in line with bandit camps from the witcher where you're wiping out this certain location uh, there's a little bit more context story wise to that but uh, there's a lot to do in night city trust me viper has gone insane says who did you romance i attempted to romance one one woman and uh i won't say who and i won't say the result but uh i, I tried 
The Skyline 5467 asks, would anyone just take some time and live in the game world without even doing anything? Or is it not quite that immersive? Now, if you watch my, my impressions video, this was one of my standout points. What I was doing a lot of the time was just standing and looking at the city. It's that beautiful. It's that gorgeous. If you look up into the skies, you'll see skyscrapers towering over you. You'll see AVs buzzing all in the airspace. You'll see cargo bots, you know, going from point A to point B delivering stuff. You'll see, depending on your district, you'll see a lot of traffic in the form of vehicles and NPCs. There's just a lot going on. You can sit on a bench and people watch um, for hours, really. The strongest elements of Night City is that you can just stand there and watch it and, and do nothing. And really just people watch and soak in the environment, the sounds, the ambient sounds that are all around you that make this city feel uh, so alive. Zane says, I've heard there's a lot of female sexualization in the game. Is it true for male sexualization? There is a lot of sexualization in general. Um, there's a lot of ads that are in your face um, with this. There's Jig Jig Street, of course. Um, is this true for male sexualization? I think so, yeah. There's Mr. Stud. There's a lot of magazines that feature males. Um, if you go to Jig Jig Street, there are, you know, prostitutes who are male. Maybe it wasn't 50-50, but I encountered a lot of uh, what I would say are side male romances. Is it on par with the female one? No. But is it there? Yes. Endless Synthwave is asking, I've been hearing a lot of criticism about the melee system, mostly the fist fighting. If you played around with it, did you enjoy it? Like I said in my preview, I played the tutorial and I thought I was going to really like melee. Then I started playing the melee and I never like a double tapping mechanic bound to any key, so dodging and you know, keeping your character in check and, and whatnot is not the most intuitive. Um, also, when you're getting hit, it's kind of hard to tell when you're getting hit because there's no exaggerated, um, you know, bobble of the head of your character or anything like that. But other than that, the sound effects of actually punching someone is quite good. Uh, once you get the gorilla arms, you really start doing a little bit more damage in boxing rings. With that being said, I definitely do prefer uh, both the swords and the gunplay. I know I mentioned in my impressions video that I thought swordplay was better than melee but still lacking. Uh, I've kind of changed my stance on that. I found a really nice sword and uh, swordplay has been very fun so far. Um, so out of the three, I think melee definitely is the weakest. It's not horrible, but it's just not your go-to. If you're specking into it, I'm sure it's going to be more fun. There's a whole skill tree called Street Brawler that you can spec into to increase your proficiency with uh, your, your bare knuckle boxing. So try that out. You can always respec for a very steep price. <laughs> Uh, at your ripper dock. But yeah, melee is just okay. Patrick Main says, people are saying the story can be done in 15 hours, much shorter than expected. Are there enough side activities, quests to take up more time? Uh, first of all, I don't know how you can get done the story in 15 hours. Uh, maybe 20, 25, but 15 seems very, very short. Uh, I was doing a run and gun, likely the fastest way that you can complete the main storyline. And I think I took around just over 20 hours, maybe just under 25. And uh, I think CDPR has done this on purpose because people didn't finish The Witcher 3. So they've kind of uh, trimmed the fat off the main quest line. Uh, but they have added that fat uh, to their side activities and their quests, which uh, are incredibly detailed story-wise and will help you take up time. This is, how, this is where you're going to spend your 100 hours. There is enough here to keep you engaged for hundreds of hours. I would say hundreds of hours. Thomas is asking, can each arm have different augmentations? No, can only pick the mantis blades, the gorilla fists, the projectile launch system, and the mono water. So you can't have one of those on one arm and the other on the other. You can only have one total in general. How does it run on last gen consoles, specifically PS4? Uh, I have no idea. I played on a PC, a very high-end PC. I have a 3080 in my in my uh, computer. Uh, and it makes me a little worried for the current gen consoles. Uh, I'll get to that more in my full review. But uh, yeah, that is one of my worries going forward. Uh, I, I don't know how this is going to play on the PS4 unless they have really, really optimized it. But yeah, uh, those are that's one of my concerns for sure. Eric Williams is asking, how customizable are the weapons? Uh, you can add a scope, you can add silencers, you can add weapon mods, uh, which depending on the weapon, if you have a legendary weapon, it will have more weapon mods so that you can augment the way that it fires. Uh, one of the ones that I had was a non-lethal weapon mod. To make the bullets non-lethal so that you didn't have to kill somebody if you shot at them um, so there's quite a bit of customization there uh, you can find variants of guns that have different skins different aesthetic looks to them and you can also find iconic weapons which are you know one-of-a-kind weapons in the world of pre-existing weapons uh, that might have some sort of unique options to them as well patrick davis asks what can you do in your apartment you can sleep 
you can go to the mirror and look in the mirror you can go to uh, your weapons locker uh, and that's about it your apartment is pretty small oh you can also go on your computer check out your messages from there uh, but your apartment is pretty small you're not going to be spending a ton of time there at least i didn't so not a whole lot but i mean enough for you to kick back and relax i suppose can we get a general idea of what buying and selling is like it's very similar to the witcher uh, you can sell all your junk you go to vendors you can sell your stuff to vendors, you can buy from vendors. Um, they have a range of different categories for different items. It's pretty on par with The Witcher 3 if you've played that. Uh, don't expect anything really super different about that. I think I've gone through all the really standout comments here. If you guys have any more, drop them in the comments. I'll be sure to answer them uh, when I get a chance. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you at my review video, which will be out soon. And for more Cyberpunk, join Neon Nation by subscribing to the Neon Arcade.